When I was first diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, I was told basically three key things. Take insulin to avoid going too high, count your carbohydrates, and eat sugar occasionally to avoid going low, right? <laughs> now, this, I wasn't actually told those things literally, uh, because what they actually told me was far more depressing than that. It's a series of misinformation where I was like, you're gonna die soon, but we don't have to get into that, because today we're talking about the 42 confirmed blood sugar variables, about things that can and likely will impact your blood sugars. So, let's get into our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. In case you have not figured it out yet, I had coffee right before this episode. <laughs> and guess what? Coffee is one of the blood sugar variables. So I'm going to try and tone it back a little bit and take a breather because uh, I don't want to stress you guys out. Because <laughs> guess what? Stress is another variable that can impact blood sugars. Man, I can do this all day because there's, well, at least 42 variables. Now, what I wanted to get straight to the point with is that there is no take insulin, eat your food, and you know, don't die. There's so much more to type 1 diabetes than we were first told when we were diagnosed, right? Now, if you were diagnosed uh, around the time that I was, or even before, you're going to have a wildly different story than someone who was diagnosed like today, right? The technology available, the medical information has changed. Uh, unfortunately, the the messages that doctors and nurses are giving the patients hasn't changed a whole lot, uh, but you are likely aware that it's more than just take insulin for the food that you eat, right? There's a lot more to it than that. As I've already mentioned, caffeine and stress can impact blood sugars. Um, and we can walk through the entire list, but honestly, that's not going to serve you as much as what I am gonna tell you today. Because we could walk through you know, hormones and sleep and stress and caffeine and hydration and exercise and food and, 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 right? There's so many things that can impact blood sugars. In fact, this list that's been circulating the internet, the 42 blood sugar factors, uh, those are the 42 confirmed blood sugar variables, <laughs> right? I mean, like, even in my own studies, I've established there are more than 42, but we don't need to get too complicated with it. We want to keep it simple. So how do you identify which of these 42 you're going to focus on? That's the core question here, right? Because no one in their right mind is going to be able to focus on 42 different things throughout their day and still maintain a normal life, right? It's just not going to happen. <laughs> you can't keep track of that many things. Uh, so with the idea of diabetes management and maintaining a social life and a career and family life and mental sanity, <laughs> you gotta identify which of those 42 blood sugar variables are the most important to you, right? So uh, what I want to walk through is that yes, all 42 are going to be important and they will likely lead to fluctuations in your blood sugars, but they don't all deserve the same amount of your attention. Here's what I mean by that. Uh, if you were to get up right now and go for a five hour walk, let's just say that's a bad example, hiking, five hour hike. Most people don't walk for five hours. <laughs> uh, let's just say, okay, right now, like I don't care if you have insulin on board, I don't care if you uh, haven't eaten in 24 hours, like if you were to go for a walk hypothetically right now for five hours, would that impact your blood sugars? Yes, answer is yes. Now, if you were to, uh, let's say, stay up from, uh, until like two o'clock in the morning, would that impact your blood sugars? Yeah, a little bit, right? But not as much as a five hour hike would impact your blood sugars, okay? So you can already see that there's different levels of these 42 variables and how they're going to impact your blood sugars based on surrounding variables. Now, of course, here's where it gets really fun. Each variable does not act independently of the others. When they are mix and matched, you will see different results. And this is where it gets really complicated if you don't know what you're doing, right? That five hour walk, it's gonna be a completely different result if you have zero insulin on board versus you just ate a meal and you have like five or 10 units on board, right? Way different. And so you can already see even just two of those variables intersecting 
massive difference, right? So we've got 42 different variables, which means how many different combinations are possible? A lot. I'm not, I don't, I can't do the math right now, but <laughs> I know that's a lot of different combinations, whether it's two or three or four or 40 of them all at once, because a lot of those variables can and will intersect in your daily life. We're right? talking about temperature. I went outside for a bike ride today. It was 106. Super, super hot, right? Oh, but that's not the only variable, is it? No, because it was a bike ride. That's exercise. Oh, but I also had some insulin on board left over from breakfast. Insulin on board. Oh, but I didn't drink enough water. Oh, dehydration, right? That's five already. That's just five. There's 42 of them. So the idea, and I don't want you to get too lost in the, wow, I am so hyper right now. I don't want you guys to get too lost in the complexities of the 42, but rather, what can you focus on of the 42 to deliver the best results? Now, this is going to shift on your day to day. And yes, there is a reason I will finally explain why I'm wearing a different shirt. I usually have my warrior t-shirt on if you're watching on, on YouTube with me. Uh, today it is an American flag because we have the 4th of July coming up if you're watching this uh, right when it came out. And uh, you know, celebrating 4th of July, Americans tend to follow some stereotypical celebrations, right? We have uh, the typical American food, which is like burgers, hot dogs, chips, like really unhealthy stuff. And a lot of times there's alcohol in the mix. Well, guess what? All of those are also factors, different types of food, the alcohol that you mix with the food, right? Not like in his recipe, but like you drink and eat, right? Uh, and I mean, real quick, let's just dive into alcohol as an example. And I, we're kind of pulling away from the main topic, but let's just hit this one real quick. With 4th of July coming up, if you are planning on drinking, and maybe I'll do a mini series on this later, but alcohol, depending on the type of alcohol, can have different impacts on your blood sugars. Do you know that? I didn't know that like five years ago when I was just kind of blissfully going through life, you know, in an ignorance is bliss kind of state. But let's just say beer, for example, a light beer that I would typically go for if I were to drink beer has like 15 carbs in it. If you go for heavier beers or lagers, or like different types of beer in and of itself are going to have differing amounts of carbs. There's some beers that have two carbs and there's some that have 40 carbs. <laughs> it's a big difference. So you gotta know what type of alcohol. Wine doesn't typically have a lot of impact on blood sugars, but if it's a sweet wine, it's got carbs, right? Mixed drinks, that's pure sugar mixed with liquor. What does liquor do, Matt? Well, liquor can often lead to a lower blood sugar later on. And so you have all these, there's a mess of variables that if you don't know how they're going to impact your blood sugars, can lead to a really dangerous situation. Why? Because what does being drunk also look like as far as symptoms go? A low blood sugar. So if you are low and not drunk, but you're at a party where other people are drinking, they might mistake your low blood sugar symptoms for being drunk, which means what? You don't get the help you need. <laughs> you see how this can impact so many different areas of your life. So uh, what I want you to do is kind of an exercise right now. <laughs> exercise, also a variable, we could play a game like this, uh, is to take a step back, look at either your CGM graph or your recent blood sugar readings and try to identify which of these variables, even just the ones that I've talked about so far, I think I've probably mentioned like 10, which of those likely led to your blood sugars doing what they're doing? Whether it was going, uh, dropping low, maybe it was spiking high, maybe they're perfectly stable. Look at those and go, why? Why did that stay stable if it was good? Why did that drop if it was less than ideal, right? You wanna have bad blood sugars, but like there's some blood sugars we don't like. <laughs> and try to identify which of the variables actually caused that, or at the very least, you know, serve as a correlation. And so if we can look at, okay, uh, I saw a massive spike at 6 p.m. Well, huh, let's take a step back. What happened at or around 6 p.m.? Oh, right, I had a mixed drink. Uh, let's just say you had a screwdriver. That's liquor, or vodka, right? Vodka and orange juice. Oh, right, orange juice, massive spike. Okay, that makes sense. Or, oh wow, I had a, a big drop at 11 a.m. What happens at 11 a.m.? Well, I work out typically around 11 a.m. Interesting, right? We can start finding these patterns based on the blood sugar variables that we can attach to them. And this is like step one of identifying patterns, 
right, within our blood sugar management. It's recognizing that it's no longer just take insulin for the carbs that you count, and if you took too much insulin, go eat some sugar, right? Like that's not the three focuses anymore. There are multiple focuses, and that's just a basic level of understanding, okay? On top of the multiple focuses, the multiple variables, it's about understanding how each of them interact with each other. And that's where it can get really complicated if you're following multiple sources, okay? And I'm not saying that I'm the, the all-knowing one single source you should be paying attention to, but like, I know a lot. <laughs> but the more sources you follow that have differing opinions, the more complicated it is going to be for you to truly understand how your body reacts to these variables. What do I mean by that? You've, depending on the level of research or connectedness you have to the type 1 diabetes community, you've likely heard a few different diets that quote unquote work best for diabetes, right? You've heard low carb, you've heard keto, you've heard paleo, you've heard vegan, you've heard low fat, whole food plant based, you've heard carnivore. There are so many diets out there and usually there's a tribe of people within each of those diets that says, this diet is the best one for all type 1 diabetics. Well, how come they're all saying that's the best one, right? Oh, <laughs> this is where it gets complex, yet freeing when you fully understand what's going on behind the scenes. And this is the kind of stuff that we teach in our program. Like, we really pull the curtains back and have like the, the whole control panel of like, here's why things are happening, here's why people think that low carb is the best, here's why people think that keto is the best, here's why people think that vegan is the best, and you know, you can kind of choose for yourself based on behind the curtain what's really going on behind the scenes, which one works best for you, and we give you the freedom to like pick your diet, right? You don't have to be like, oh, I'm diabetic, so I have to eat this way. No, you could be like, I chose to eat this way because I wanted to, <laughs> and here's the strategy that I used to follow that specific diet, and here's why it works. And this is the key to achieving that freedom with type 1 diabetes, ultimately, right, is to have an understanding so deep of why blood sugars do what they do, right, understanding the 42 plus variables and how they interact with each other, to have that understanding to be so deep, okay, and so built into your mind that you get to choose how you live your life. Right, so if you have this deep understanding of how different diets work, of how different types of exercise work, how different types of alcohol impact blood sugars, how to travel with type 1 diabetes, if you've got this memory bank of how things are going to impact blood sugars, then when you get thrown into a spontaneous situation, like myself, I wanted to go for a bike ride today before it got too hot. <laughs> I know that like, sounds ridiculous because it was like 100 degrees, right? But I wanted to do that. I was like, all right, let's go for a bike ride. Yes, insulin on board, super hot, dehydrated, exercise, all these different factors. And in like 10 seconds, I'm like, doot, 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 okay, do X, Y, Z, this is gonna be a smooth ride. I got to go out and do what I wanted to do because I have this memory bank of the understanding of how blood sugars work, right? And this is where it gets fun. When you have this understanding, you get to look at an activity or a meal or even just getting a full night's sleep. Oh my gosh, it's amazing when you can sleep through the night, right? But you can look at these things and go, oh, right, I just need to pull from this strategy, make sure this happens, and then smooth. I get to be spontaneous, adventurous, eat foods that I love, do the activities that I've always wanted to do. That's where the true freedom truly gets to come to the surface and you get to relax a little bit. That's what we're after, right? Having such control over our blood sugars that we don't have to worry all the time. And I'll tell you, this is the, the single reason why I can get so much done in my day now is because I don't have to constantly be checking blood sugars. Like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not constantly dipping out of meetings because I'm going low or too high. Like, this is the freedom that you're after. Having an understanding of your blood sugars, knowing how they interact so that you can predict where blood sugars are going to go. Now, there's one final piece I want to give to you the understanding of how your blood sugars respond, the interaction of these different variables, right? The 42 blood sugar variables. A, I know it's a lot. It takes time, especially if you're doing it on your own, to research each of the individual uh, variables, because that is that is what I did. I researched each individual piece of that puzzle so that I could then experiment, understand how they interact. And here's why experimentation, or following somebody who knows what they're doing and has experimented before, is so important because each of these variables, yes, they interact differently when they intersect, right? But they also interact differently when they intersect for each individual based on certain underlying factors. 
that's where it gets tricky. That's where it helps to bring in an expert. Right? That's why we have people who know what they're doing, who have dedicated their lives to understanding and researching type 1 diabetes. Now, unfortunately, there's one caveat here. An expert can be an expert, but that can be based in, in book smarts, right? And they might not have any experiential learning under their, their wings. And so, as a result, they may know what to tell you, but then you come back and say, well, that's weird because I experienced X, Y, Z. They're going to go, huh. Well, that's not what my medical book told me, right? And unfortunately, most of us don't have the, the privilege of having an endocrinologist or a doctor that also lives with type 1 diabetes. I've met a few of them. I'm so jealous for those who have that opportunity, but most of us don't. And so finding somebody who not only is an expert, has researched these different variables, how they impact blood sugars, how to live your best life, and have healthy and stable blood sugars, but also somebody who has lived it, as well, who has that experience in their life with type 1 diabetes, who can say, yes, that happens, and here's an example from my life when I prove that that happens, right? And so the first level, as we mentioned, the 42 variables, that's a starting point, understanding those at such a deep level that they can be applied to your life without having to pull out the books and research and say, wait, 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 can't go to dinner yet, I have to research how fats and proteins are going to impact my blood sugars, right? Instead, you just pull on your memory and go, oh no, fats, proteins, got it, let's go to the barbecue, right? <laughs> let's go enjoy the food. Uh, but two, is understanding how each of those variables intersects and interacts with each other. Because each one, you know, like point number two and point number 41, they interact differently than point two and then point 36 interact, right? The, all of the variables have different interactions and when they do interact and come together, like my bike ride, right? Heat, exercise, insulin on board, dehydration, like it's going to give you a slightly different variation of your blood sugar formula. And that is why the blood sugar formula is so important because it removes all the guesswork, okay? It removes all of the, well, what if this? What if X happens or Y happens? And you just plug in your numbers and go, okay, if X plus Y equals Z, we're gonna have smooth blood sugars. So let's just make sure X plus Y equals Z, right? And then you get to go through your day and have a smooth barbecue or bike ride or sleep through the night. I hope that makes sense. So as we have a deeper understanding of the variables, we can either choose to research those individually. It takes a lot of time. I've done that. It took me a couple of years. And then experiment to see how they impact your blood sugars when they interact. And of course, you, gotta, you have to take into mind, like, is the four interacting with each other? Or is it two interacting? Or is it ten of them interacting at once? Right? There's a lot of different variations and variables within that experimentation. It is possible. It's the same route that I took, right? I had the experience of playing with my type 1 diabetes after researching how it impacts blood sugars. But once you are able to have that understanding meets the experimentation or the formula, then you're able to predict where blood sugars are going to go. So I hope this will make sense for you guys. Uh, then remember the action item for today. Take a step back, look at your CGM graph or your blood sugars from the last 24 hours, the last seven days, whatever it is, and try to identify which of the variables led to your blood sugar fluctuations, okay? And if you want a deeper understanding of the 42 variables, I actually go over them specifically, and I also talk about which ones are most important to prioritize and focus for you, then head over to my free training where I went, I went over the actual blood sugar formula. It's known as the 80-20 blood sugar formula, and you're probably not gonna be able to guess why it's called that, but I encourage you to go watch that training, figure it out, and implement what you learn. Uh, it's gonna be at diabetesinaction.com. I'll likely make this into a, uh, a series of sorts and uh, continue going down this path of different variables, how they impact blood sugars. Maybe we'll hit alcohol or caffeine or stress. In fact, let me know in the comments which of those variables you'd like me to dive deeper into. And uh, of course, head over to that training, grab it up and use it, implement it to change your life with diabetes. All right, that's gonna be at diabetesinaction.com. Have an amazing day. I will see you over in that training and keep up the fight.